Hi, everyone. This is Dan O'Neill, the Executive Director of the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum. Before we get to our third Sunday presentation, I would like to thank the following businesses for sponsoring today's lecture. They made a vital investment in our museum, and their support is why we are able to bring you this lecture series at no charge. This month, we are really excited to bring you William McCone. Born and raised on the Mexican border of Texas in 1937, McCone has embraced Vermont as his home in Cambridge since 1984. A former intelligence analyst with the National Security Agency with a master's in military history, he writes about certain aspects of the struggle for Irish independence in the American Civil War of 1861 to 65. The published history of Captain John Lonergan, who received a Medal of Honor for gallantry in leading his Irish company at Gettysburg and was the head of the Fenians in Vermont, will hopefully be joined by several other books that are in the works. The Falturo of Galore. Welcome everyone to a presentation jointly sponsored by the Ethan Allen Homestead and the Fenian Historical Society about the relations of Vermont, Quebec, and the Irish question over the years. The Fenian Brotherhood, of whom I am the president, uh, is undeservedly neglected in the history of the United States and Ireland, and in particular Vermont. And we'll see at the end of the presentation here uh, the significance for this unit, this organization. Just to review the um, starting point here, the Nations in the 19th century were quite different in terms of configuration. Uh, you can see a map of 1809 rather arbitrarily, um, which includes Ireland as part of the United Kingdom uh, as it became. Uh, and here's the current configuration of the counties of Ireland and the unfortunate situation where it is, the island is currently uh, divided with the northeastern part, still part of the United Kingdom uh, and the Republic of Ireland and the rest of the, uh, the 26 counties in the south. So the original Fenians, that we're referencing here uh, is a Gaelic term of the Irish. Fien is a, is a warrior. The collective is Fenia, and the adjectival form is Fenian. Um, the Fena were selected young men in various countries, including Scotland, um, sworn to defend their country, serving the, the Arkri, the, the High King. The best known was Fen McCool, whose exploits are recounted in the Finiacta, the tales of the Fenia. Quite interesting reading in the translation uh, for those of us who don't have the Irish. Because of the conquest of Ireland by the, the English, basically, became the British. Um, there was, uh, and what, what amounted to cultural genocide practiced as they tried to obliterate um, the Irish language and culture. Um, many of these people, uh, in order to get an education, 
immigrated to France and to Spain, welcomed there as fellow Catholics, as opposed to the Church of England. Um, and many got their education in one of those countries. Now, the model of Ireland as an oppressed and exploited plantation um, served as a um, served as a, the the model to exploit plantations overseas. Uh, it was rather clear to the United States that this was largely the fate if they uh, continued under the monarchy. The, the French possessions of extensive territory in North America were con conquered by the, by the British. Um, the crucial battle at the Plains of Abraham near Quebec City um, took place in 1759. And then the British crown uh, was ceded to all the, um, all the French territory in 1765. Um, Ethan Allen, whose homestead uh, sponsors this, this um, presentation, um, acted largely through what might be considered self-interest because of his conflicting land claims between New York and New Hampshire. And he assaulted Fort Ticonderoga, a, a key fortification on Lake Champlain. Uh, and um, at the, the start of the American Revolution, he then went on to follow Montgomery and the unsuccessful attack on Montreal, where he was captured in 1775, held prisoner until 1778. Um, part of this time, he was kept on uh, prison hulks, uh, decommissioned ships, uh, and he was also shipped um, back to, to, to what would become the United States um, and was delayed in Cork, Ireland by the weather where he was visited and celebrated by uh, a number of Irishmen uh, who bestowed gifts on him and saw his example of revolution against the monarchy very favorably. Republic of Vermont governed the Green Mountain area uh, 1777 and 1791 before becoming the 14th state in the United States. Uh, before and during this period, uh, the Allens toyed with um, discussions about forming uh, a united Columbia, which would consist of territories in, in Quebec and Vermont. Um, in 1796, Ira Allen traveled to France where he bought supposedly for the Vermont militia, 20,000 muskets far in excess of what the demand was, along with cannon um, supplied by the French and shipped, uh, shipped on the olive branch, the most um, ironic name one could think of for, for such a shipment of armament. Um, the shipment was seized by the British uh, on suspicion that he was intended to provide the weapons either for the Irish who were in the throes of the United Irishmen rebellion where the French were supporting them, or perhaps in the United Columbia effort of forming a country of Vermont and 
Quebec. Things were not peaceful in, in Canada uh, throughout the, the whole period. Um, there was disputes about uh, the, the rights of the Irish, of, by the, of the French, uh, that led to a movement called the Patriots. Um, we see here on the top a meeting in the six counties of the Eastern Townships. Uh, below is the handsome portrait of Louis Papineau, uh, and alongside is the uh, the black and white drawing of his second in command, um, Edmund O'Callaghan. Callaghan was the editor of the Vindicator in Montreal, where he pushed uh, the U.S. the the cause of Ireland. Uh, both men fled to Vermont when they when the rebellion failed. Uh, of their supporters, a dozen or so were hanged in the square in Montreal, and hundreds were transported to the new penal colonies in Australia. The first shipments after the British had lost Georgia as a dumping ground for their convicts, um, they decided that, that Australia was suitably distant uh, and needed population. So that began the practice that many, um, many Irishmen ended up in, in Australia in, in exile. Uh, many of the Irish had come to, to the New World, places like Canada, uh, as a chance to improve themselves by choice. Uh, but many more uh, were, were doomed to flee the country in desperation. Conditions continued to deteriorate. The English landlords who owned all of the property, essentially, uh, squeezed the increasing population uh, with restrictions based on the Catholic religion and the ownership of property, which was almost impossible, uh, both of which would have encouraged people to leave if they could afford it. And it was the cheapest way to travel was by British ship. Uh, so many people came to Canada uh, but then continued their journey to the United States uh, by water if they could afford it or on foot if they could. Um, the series of failures that took place over the 1840s uh, were the potato, which the average family depended upon, uh, failed with the blight. Uh, there was about 8 million Irish uh, on the island at the time. Famine and disease killed uh, roughly a, a million of them, while another million fled the, the island in, in despair, uh, many of whom got as far as Montreal, even into Kingston, uh, and were buried in, in mass graves, having survived the terrible journey. Uh, but dying. At the time of the, um, the, the worst of Aguarta Moor, the Irish call it, the Great Hunger, um, a, a rising of what was called the Confederate Clubs took place in 1848. Um, there was a mass rally of 50,000 men who climbed Mount Slievedamon, well, a, a place very much associated with Finn McCool, the first of the, the Fenian uh, heroes, uh, where um, the, the first flag of the Irish Republic, uh, as we know it today, uh, was 
flown at the uh, at the rally and saved them all. Now, Thomas Francis Marr had been uh, given this uh, a flag of this pattern when he was in France. France, um, very similar to what the Patriots flew in their rebellion in Canada, although the stripes were horizontal and it was green, white, and red. This is green, white, and orange. And it's for green for the Irish, orange for the Protestants, the orange order. William of Orange conquered, um, conquered the Ireland, conquered Ireland. Uh, and white was a hope for peace between the two. This is the official flag today in, in Ireland. After the 1848 revolution was uh, repressed, uh, the two major leaders of this mo political movement uh, took up residence in Paris, uh, where they were involved with uh, the commune and the, the revolution there, and learned a thing or two about, um, about how to form a revolution. So uh, 10 years later, John O'Mahony, who had immigrated to New York City, uh, formed the Fenian Brotherhood, and in parallel with that, James Stevens created the Irish Revolutionary Brotherhood um, in England, in Ireland. Now, Mahane was responsible for choosing the name of Fenian as the Brotherhood. Uh, he was an Irish scholar had translated a, a significant uh, study of, of Irish history from, from the Irish to the English. Uh, and he included his um, flag that he created uh, that would, um, would demonstrate to even the, the mostly illiterate uh, Irish uh, that this was a revolutionary movement, he included the sunburst, which was the flag of Finn McCool, a motto in Irish, which at a point many of the Irish still spoke, spoke English among themselves. And he included a harp that did not have the required British crown atop it um, that made it clear um, that this was a, a revolution against the monarchy. Uh, the, um, the Irish were prepared to, to carry the fight from the United States back to the to Ireland to free their homeland. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the American Civil War of 1861 to 65 interfered with that. You can see here the, the various revolutionary themes, including the cloudburst, uh, the, the sun, the harp without the crown, and the inscription at the bottom, which translates roughly as, who never fled from the sound of battle. Now, military units of the Fenian Brotherhood were very cleverly created and identified uh, as Fenian uh, in the state militias. So you had many uh, fanciful names like Brian Boru's rifles and the Sarsfield militia and 
companies that were very clearly identified with this movement of the Fenian Brotherhood. And the plan, generally speaking, was to, to get trained and to uh, learn to, 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 to compete with the British forces. Um, but unfortunately, the secession of the Southern states in 1861 preempted this, this action against the British. And many Irishmen fought at times against each other uh, on the competing Union and Confederate sides, which resulted in the loss of, of uh, many, many Fenians to the cause. After the uh, war ended, uh, this is a illustration from the Fenian bonds that were sold in various denominations. And you can see the appeal was that the, the um, soldier should again pick up his sword and fight for Ireland. As you can see in the upper right, the, the iconic crown around tower uh, where the person with the, the harp and the wolfhound is saying this person should go. Um, there was not too surprisingly uh, political infighting uh, that resulted in the Fenian Brotherhood's leadership splitting in October 1865 at a crucial time when there was hopes of a successful revolution in Ireland itself. One wing, the Roberts wing, uh, insisted on uh, taking action in North America in preference to Ireland. Uh, Omahane, the leader at the time, uh, did did uh, organize a, a very abortive attack on uh, Canada through Maine. Uh, but as a, as a result, um, lost his position. There was an uprising in Ireland that was easily crushed. As unfortunately, there were some very successful informants who were keeping the British involved, uh, informed about the the plans. The new president, Roberts, uh, instigated an attack on Canada in 1866, um, and the Fenians crossed from New York and Vermont into Canada. You can see here that there was no dominion of Canada at the time. The major portions of, of the population were divided into Upper Canada and Lower Canada um, along the lines of the Ottawa, um, also referred to as Canada West and Canada East. And you can kind of identify Upper Canada with more of the, um, the English settlement and Lower Canada with the French, although a very heavy smattering of Celtic immigrants, both from Scotland and Ireland, um, were present in both these these um, both these sections, these divisions. Uh, in 1860, it's my understanding that about a fifth of the of the uh, population of Canada spoke either. Scots or Irish Gaelic as their first language, but with their policy of cultural amalgamation, uh, the languages have virtually died out uh, in Canada, uh, despite efforts to revive them. So the plan to attack Canada in 1866 was rather ambitious. They had recruited many, many 
experienced Irishman from who had fought in the American Civil War. And you can say that their, their ambition was to, um, to have a multi-pronged attack, uh, which extended from west to the, uh, the Great Lakes all the way up to, to uh, uh, an axis from Vermont. For various reasons, um, not the least of which was the informant uh, who kept everyone advised in the British system. Uh, he, he claimed to be a Frenchman named Henri Le Caron. He was in fact Thomas Beach, uh, and he uh, worked his way up into a responsible position in the Fenian Brotherhood uh, that kept, kept the uh, authorities in Canada quite well informed. Uh, there are also logistical issues and difficulties, but the two, the central and the east wing did in fact uh, organize, uh, assemble soldiers and attacked into Canada. Uh, they hope by doing this to either seize part of the empire to swap for Canada for, for independence for Ireland or to draw uh, British troops over into Canada to make it easier to, to uh, do an uprising uh, in Ireland. Uh, and the idea that they might demonstrate uh, the experience and power of the, the Fenian soldiers who for the first time were taking, taking the field as the Irish Republican Army. Now the IRA has uh, developed into uh, quite a different 20th century, 21st century um, reputation and uh, but it, this, these were were the armed Fenians of the Fenian Brotherhood acting as the Irish Republican Army. Uh, they had hoped politically to proclaim uh, the presence of the Irish nationhood to be recognized by other countries like the United States. And this was their first act on attacking Canada. Uh, that in 1866, the, the main action uh, took place with uh, under John O'Neill, who brought about 600 uh, armed soldiers uh, across from Buffalo. Uh, and there was heavy fighting between British regulars and uh, the militia, which cost uh, several dozen lives on both, both sides. Um, the IRA was cut off from its supply by uh, US action. Uh, many of the Irish were, were taken prisoners and those who had been born in the United States, in, in Britain, um, were convicted of treason because the, 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 the policy was you could not give up British um, citizenship. You could not discard that in favor of, of Canada. Um, the result immediate, although plans had been made beforehand of the attack, uh, the incursion by the Fenian Brotherhood was the confederation of provinces into the dominion of Canada in 1867. So if you've ever wondered why um, Confederation Day is the 1st of July, 1867, um, 
it was at least in part a response to this attack by the Fenians. Now the Fenians took the field once more in 1870. Uh, this time they attacked from Malone, New York, in upstate Malone, uh, New York, to avoid the difficulty of crossing at Buffalo with the Niagara River. And they again attacked from their original sta staging area uh, from Franklin, New York. Um, there was um, no military success, but there were casualties. Um, two Irishmen, John Rowe and from Burlington and uh, Michael O'Brien from New York were shot and killed. Uh, during this battle, but they left some um, left a legacy uh, that lingered on for future generations. Uh, the term Fenian became remains uh, uh, the word to describe militant Irish nationalists. The Fenian Brotherhood after the Last assault in 1870 was largely replaced by the Clan Nagale, uh, a similar organization. It also called for the establishment of a republic, not a monarchy, uh, the abolition of nobility and the uh, return of the property to the Irish. Um, and this was very much brought to, to mind at the funeral of O'Donovan Ross, a prominent uh, Fenian who had been imprisoned, uh, was quite aged, died in New York, uh, was brought back to Ireland. And in 1915, uh, Patrick Pierce was called upon to uh, to give the eulogy at the gravesite of the Fenians. And his moving statement there about um, the situation where Ireland was still under the monarchy and still uh, repressed. Um, what you see on the, the bottom of the slide are the two great grandsons who have commemorated uh, a documentary of O'Donnell Rasta, Skibbereen, and the statement by Patrick Pierce. Um, he said, the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. While Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace. The next year, there was a proclamation to the people of Ireland declaring the Republic of Ireland in effect. Pierce read it from the steps of the general post office in Dublin had been seized by the, by the rebels. Uh, in a, a heroic but unequal fight. Um, heavy artillery was brought in to, to destroy the um, post office. The men surrendered uh, and in a series of executions were um, killed in twos and threes by firing squad in Kilmainham jail. Um, whoops. But we, we honor and respect their, their sacrifice and the rest of the Fenians. I formed the Fenian Historical Society some years back and recruited uh, reenactors. Uh, here's a picture of 
St. Patrick's Day in 2016, the Fenians on the march again. Uh, and I invite anyone with an interest in Irish history in general or the Fenian movement in particular um, to join the Fenian Historical Society, FenianHistoricalSociety.org will get you to it. And um, we'd welcome anyone interested in the culture, the history, the language uh, of, of the, the period uh, that was very significant and underappreciated as part of the history of Ireland and Vermont and Quebec and Canada and the United States. So it's my, my role is to um, gather this information and to make it uh, accessible on the website and through meetings such as this. So thank you for recording. Our, thank you for attending our uh, little presentation here. And uh, I will just leave you with a, the tip of the Irish hat saying, Slantja. Thank you, William, for a wonderful presentation. Next month, we will not have a third Sunday lecture presentation, but we invite you to take part in our virtual Midwinter's Eve, a page on our website where we have activities, songs, dances, recipes, and other things that all took place around the holidays in 18th century Vermont. We hope you'll tune in and try some of these activities at home. Thank you very much. And as always, if you enjoyed this presentation and would like to support the Ethan Allen Homestead, please go to the donation link in the description box below or on our website, ethanallenhomestead.org. Thank you very much and we'll see you next month.